Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is part F, the sixth portion of lecture three on histograms, part of the course on descriptive statistics and Islamic approach. In this part, we'll talk about the percentage histogram, also called the probability histogram. Probability is related to random choice, but there are two meanings of this word random. The ordinary English language meaning of random is just something which is done haphazardly without any conscious decision, without any method. We will call this e-random. In statistics, the use of the word random has a very special meaning. It means that all members of the population have an equal chance of being chosen if I choose at random. So for example, if I want to choose a country at random, I can put up a map of the globe on the board and uh, throw a dart. And this is uh, haphazard, a random method of choosing a country. But this is not, this is e-random, but it is not s-random because we don't know if all of the countries have equal chances. In fact, the smaller countries will have a less of a chance of being hit. So to do uh, s-random, that is a statistically random choice, we need to ensure that all countries have an equal chance. And this is done, for example, by choosing a uniform random number from 1 to 190. And then, uh, so uh, when this is done in Excel, that Excel has a built-in random number generator which gives equal chances to all numbers. And uh, we take that number and then we choose the country which has that number in our list of 190 countries. In this way, all countries will have an equal chance of being chosen. To see how this works, we look at the three bin histogram from the previous lecture, uh, which is um, divided into three categories. And the first chart is the standard count histogram. It shows that the lowest bin, which goes from 58 to 52 to 63.5, uh, it has about 28 countries in it, 27 countries. The next bin, which is the middle bin, has 71 countries, and the last bin has uh, 90 something countries. So this is the standard count histogram which we are making. Now we want to change that to uh, the percentage. So instead of talking about 27 countries, we look at the ratio of countries. So it's 27 out of 190. So basically the graph is exactly the same. The only difference is that the uh, vertical axis instead of having the number of countries has the percentage on the chart. And so um, the all the numbers must be less than 100% because each bin can only contain uh, some proportion. So this is how the percentage histogram works. We can explain it in numbers by looking at the three bins. Uh, the first bin has 27 countries, the second bin, which is the mid range and the has 71 countries and the high range, which goes from 74 to 85, has 92 countries in it. So uh, the count histogram has the number of countries. The percentage histogram has the ratio of these countries to the total number. So the low uh, bin has 27 divided by 190, which is 14.2%. So that is the um, the, uh, num the the number which is marked against the a low bin. The mid bin has 71 over 190, which is 37.4%, and the high bin has 48.4 percentage of the countries in it. So this is called the the when you look at the percentage histogram, this is called a distribution for reasons we'll make clearer later, inshallah. So what does this percentage mean? Actually, this percentage corresponds to a probability. Uh, and uh, suppose we choose a country at random from the 190 countries. And this is statistical randomness. That is, all countries must have an equal chance of being chosen. Now, um, let LE of C be the life expectancy of the randomly chosen country. This is called a random variable. It's a very important concept in statistics. You choose a country at random and then you look at some characteristic. It doesn't have to be life expectancy, but the, uh, it could be the population in the country, for example. But for the moment, we are looking at the life expectancy. So this is now a random number because the country is random. So now what is the chance that this life expectancy, which we get by 
choosing a country at random and then looking at its life expectancy. What is the chance that it's in the lowest bin, which goes from 52.8 to 63.5? Well, as the histogram shows us, about 14.2% of the countries belong to this bin, so the probability is exactly 14.2%. Similarly, the probability that this life expectancy is in the middle bin is 37.4% and the highest bin is 48.4%. So it's very simple. When you choose a country at random, what is the chance that it is in the 27 countries which are in the lowest bins? Well, it's 27 out of 190 because each country has an equal chance of being chosen. And that 27 over 190 translates to the 14.2% probability that life expectancy is in the lowest bin for this random choice. Um, the graph that we can is, get is called the distribution of this random variable because the height of the graph shows where the uh, random variable is likely to be. The larger the graph, the more likely the random variable is to be in that part of the graph. So that's what the distribution is. A theoretical tool which is of great importance is called the cumulative distribution function, which is uh, um, best illustrated in an example with few countries. So I choose about five countries from this original data set. And these five countries are Qatar, Turkey, Egypt, Afghanistan, and Sudan. And I've chosen them so that they have a widespread of values. Qatar has 81 0.0 life expectancy, Turkey has 74.5, Egypt has 69.9, Afghanistan has 60.6, and Sudan has 56.1. So it's spread out over the range. So we will assume that this is the population. The population is the full uh, set of countries. So just to simplify life, we will think that there are only these five countries that we are dealing with. And so when we take a random sample from this, each of these five countries has a 20% chance of being chosen. So the cumulative distribution has a technical definition. For any number x, uh, we ask, what is the probability that a randomly chosen country will have life expectancy less than x, less than or equal to x? So, um, each country has a 20% chance of being chosen, so these numbers will be like 20%, 40%, and so on. Uh, this is the definition of the cumulative distribution function, and the reason that it is important will be clarified a bit later. So now here is a picture of the cumulative distribution function of the life expectancy, uh, which is a random variable. The Sudan is the country with the smallest life expectancy, which is 56.1. So if x is less than this number, if x is less than 56.1, then uh, the con and no matter which country we choose, the life expectancy will never be less than or equal to x, which means that the probability of the life expectancy being less than or equal to x is zero. So that shows you that the star graph starts out at 50 and is at zero. This is the CDF until it reaches 56.1. At 56.1, the graph has a jump. For numbers between 56.1 and 60.6, the, there is only one country which has life expectancy uh, below these numbers because <clears throat> the next country is Afghanistan with 60.6. So F, if X is between 56.1 and 60.6, then the, if Sudan is chosen, the life expectancy will be less than X. And for all other countries, life expectancy will be bigger than X. So it means that the probability of uh, life expectancy being less than X is 20%. And this is what the graph shows that for numbers between 56.1 and 60.6, the CDF is exactly equal to 20%. For all these numbers, there is only one country which has life expectancy less than X, and the, this one country has a 20% chance of being chosen in a sample of five. Now, when we go to the uh, beyond 60.6, 
now um, uh, between 60.6 and uh, uh, 69.9, I think, uh, which is the third country, uh, there are two countries which are below these values. So the chance of life expectancy being less than uh, li something like 65 is 40% uh, because there are two countries which have life expectancies below this and three which are above. So for all numbers between the life expectancy of Afghanistan and the next country up, uh, the life expectancy, the, the, the CDF is at 40%. So at each country, the life expectancy jumps by 20%. And uh, so it goes from 0 to 20% to 40% to 60% to 80%. And finally, when we get to a number with like 85, this is above the life expectancy of all the countries. So the prob for all, any country you choose, the probability is 100% that the life expectancy will be less than X. So the graph is flat at 100%. So that's the basic shape of the CDF. And this is called a staircase because it looks like a staircase. So finally, this is this concludes our um, exp explanation of the CDF. And uh, this CDF is a theoretical tool which is used in uh, more advanced statistics. In this particular course, we are not looking at probabilities. We are just looking at descriptive statistics. So we think of the CDF as just a way to map the data. It's just one uh, way to look at what the data are telling us directly. Uh, in this, um, uh, the, see the uh, histogram itself, the percentage histogram, allows us to calculate probabilities of a country belonging to a particular bin or a category. What is the probability that a randomly chosen country will have low life expectancy or medium or high. These are the numbers we can calculate. Uh, this is different uh, This is different from in the percentage histogram, uh, which gives us directly the probabilities. The um, For random variables, the bin probabilities tell us the probability that the life expectancy falls within two numbers. Uh, but these numbers, the bins are chosen arbitrarily, so these numbers are not very useful to us from theoretical point of view. So the cumulative distribution function is a tool which allows us to calculate the probability of falling into any bin. If once we have the CDF, then we can calculate the probability of all bins because for any bin which goes from A to B, the probability of being inside that bin can be calculated by calculating the CDF at B, which is the probability of all numbers up to B, and then subtracting the CDF of A, which is the probability of all numbers up to A. By subtracting this, we, we get left with the segment between A and B. So this CDF allows us to compute the probability of all bins, which is why it is a valuable theoretical tool. But in this course, we will not be dealing very much with probabilities and uh, CDFs. So we just think of it as a way to uh, make a picture of the data. The, both the percentage histogram and the CDF are just pictures of the data, and we will try to understand these pictures intuitively rather than from theoretical and mathematical point of view in this course on descript descriptive statistics. So that's the end of lecture three.